Hi everyone! I have here another scroller box, so yeah, let's get into it. This is the box of June, I think. Yes, it is. Also, if you would like to get a scroller box yourself, I will have a link in the description box below. And there will also be a discount code for you guys to use. And I might also mention that it is an affiliate link, so you're also helping me out at the same time. To no extra cost for you guys, of course. So as usual, let's open it and see what's inside. All right, so let's see. Oh, oh my gosh, I've never seen a scroller box looking this neat when opening it. Usually the boxes look a little more messy with art supplies all over the place. I kind of almost don't want to move it around, but yep, here we go. Look how cute this is with a little cardboard box and the colors and this perfect little package. So we have this. Oh, this is so pretty. Oh, I thought I recognized the styles. So the featured artist is Alice Coles, also known as Hello Alice. And I've been following her for such a long time here on YouTube. And here is where you can find her art. And I highly recommend you to go and give her a follow. Yeah, that is awesome. I know she works a lot with watercolors. So I really hope there will be some watercolors in here and then we have a whole little package of what looks like watercolor paper so it got this typical watercolor texture all right let's start with this one i'm so curious to see what's inside special color selection especially for scroller box and it's by derwent wow this tape is terrible <gasps> oh it's crayons all right, it is not watercolors, but it says Derwent Ink Tense on them. So I have a guess that these might be water soluble, like watercolor crayons, perhaps. Let's start with the menu. Water soluble pigments, which create a vivid ink like medium when combined with a little water. Once dried after application, ink tense becomes permanent. So it is kind of like ink in shape of crayons. That is very interesting. And the paper that I showed you before is Sea White of Brighton, 350 GSM cold pressed watercolor paper. And we got 12 sheets. Wow, that is very um, generous. I totally lost that word. And we got the sticker with like a watercolor texture. And I really love these colors together. It is so pretty. And a little snack or candy. I can't really place the flavor. Maybe it is like apple or something. It is fruity anyway. And now my fingers are all sticky. So we got a paintbrush number six from Sea White. And we have a jelly roll gel pen. You can't have too many white jelly roll gel pens or maybe you can. And then we have a Caran d'Ache Prismalo pencil and it got a little paintbrush on it so it is probably water soluble but I'm not sure if it is a watercolor color pencil or a uh, graphite pencil. I'm pretty sure I will find out once I'm swatching it and let's just flip through the scrolly theme of June 2020 really fast too. So we have a little bit of scroller update talking about how colors affects us that is very interesting and we have some featured art from previous scroller challenges look how pretty those are. Some tips from the artist about the art supplies and a little bit of information about the artist. I really love Alice's art it is so beautiful and here we have the art supplies so let's swatch the art supplies i suppose oh look at all those paper sheets and since i've actually never tried this type of medium before i'm gonna read the tips from the artist see if i can actually learn something how to use them so yeah it seems like my microphone wasn't recording properly but hopefully it is working now so let's start with a caran d'ache pencil yeah, it seems like it is a like a color pencil and not a graphite pencil, which I'm very happy about. Let's add a little bit of water. Ugh. Making a mess. Yeah, it is dissolving pretty well, but I'm not a huge fan of the paintbrush. It is very soft and I don't like soft paintbrushes. And then we have the Inktense crayons. That is a little softer than I thought it would be. It is kind of like a mix between oil pastel and dry pastel. It isn't quite as waxy, but it isn't super dry either. A 
and then we have a little bit of water oh look at that that is gorgeous and the paper also seems very nice it got a little bit of texture which i like and this is how the paintbrush looks after just one swatch and apparently you can add the crayons to the paper and then just spray a little bit of water on it and they will dissolve and like melt together kind of so and i'm gonna spray some water on that and see what's gonna happen oh look at that then you can take the paintbrush and kind of like move it around and blend them together that is nice that is a technique that you can use for backgrounds and such and then you can also just take the crayon and use it like a watercolor pan and just pick up the pigments directly from it wow look how pigmented that is Ooh. they have a little bit of a chalky texture to them but i guess it is because it is crayons so the less water the more uh, chalky they becomes i suppose also let's try out the jelly roll yeah it kind of shows up on top of the watercolor it isn't super visible but i guess you can use it to make some sort of highlights but yeah that is that let's try to make some art with these art supplies oh also i almost forgot the scrawler challenge oh i like this one spirit animal so yeah let's get started So we have this prompt spirit animal and usually I feel a little blank about the prompt because it puts me outside of my comfort zone as it's supposed to do I guess but this time I feel like it is right up my alley drawing an animal and adding a little bit of mystique to it perfect and I'm drawing a fox as you may have noticed the fox has been one of my spiritual animal companions from time to time and I don't believe that you just have one spirit animal throughout your whole life but you can have multiple spirit animals and it can shift depending on where you are mentally and in life but I will talk more about the meaning of the fox later So I had this idea to have a gradient sky and a forest behind the fox but I still wasn't quite sure how to pull that off so I felt I needed to do a little more practice with the art supplies just to try out my ideas before putting it into practice. Also if you're wondering what that blue stuff in the upper left corner is, it is masking fluid. I thought I would use it to mask out the glow coming out from the fox's eyes but I decided to just skip that but I think I gathered some really useful information from doing this I learned to not put too much crayon directly on the paper and to not have the area drawn with the crayons touching each other for the best blending effect so I added the crayons directly to the paper but I left a little space between the colors so that they wouldn't be too muddy when they blended together I also noticed that adding too much crayon crayon would give a very thick and chalky texture and consistency when adding water to it so I went in very gently with the amount of crayon on the paper and then I kind of used the crayons as watercolors and I picked up pigments directly from them with the paintbrush just to add a little more vibrancy to the sky and then I spritzed the sky with a little bit of water just to help the pigments blend a little better and to make it more smooth and then I let it dry completely just so I could spritz some more water on it and while the paper was still damp I added some trees to the background with the black water color pencil i noticed before when i did a little bit of practicing with the art supplies that drawing with the pencil on wet paper the lines turns out very dark and pigmented and they also get this very soft look and the reason to why i let the background dry completely before adding more water to it it is because when the paint dries they becomes permanent like 
ink. So once the paint is permanent, they can't be reactivated with water again. So then when adding water again, the black pencil wouldn't blend or mix with the background colors. I also let the sky show through some of the trees in the background. I really like the color of the sky, so I didn't want to hide it behind some trees. And I also really like the look of that. It is like the colors of the sky is reflecting on the trees. It gives a very light and stylized feeling to it. And then I mixed the yellow, brown and a little bit of magenta on a scrap piece of paper to create an orangey color for the fox's fur. And to be honest, I'm not a big fan of the texture of these crayons and the paints that they create. They get this thicker consistency and it is like moving around thinned out ketchup kind of on the paper. And I guess since it is very similar to watercolors, I somehow expect it to behave like watercolors watercolors too, but it's clearly not. This is a completely new medium to me, so I guess I will need a little more practice to fully enjoy it. But I think during this whole drawing session, I came to appreciate the supplies more than I did at first. Anyway, let's talk a little about this fox and its spiritual meaning. The meaning of a spirit animal may vary depending on who you ask, but I guess the main meaning of the fox is being more open and aware and to see through deception and the ability to find your way around tricky situations. It encourages you to take action, quick thinking and swift moves. The meaning of the fox is also to trust your own abilities and that a creative mind will find solutions. And as I said, the meaning may vary, but that's the main message of the fox that I know of anyway. And I think it is such a lovely spirit animal and it had helped me a lot. Let me know what your spirit animal is or if you had several. Sometimes you don't really have to know the meaning behind them. You can just feel connected somehow. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of people watching this don't believe in that kind of things at all. And that is totally okay. But if you can find help and encouragement in things like that, why not listen to it and take it to heart? Because what harm could it do? But anyway, let's go back to this little fox here that I'm painting. I'm adding like line art with a black pencil by picking up the pigments from the pencil nib and applying it with the paintbrush. And I think the outlines, they really played a big role here since the crayon paint thing, whatever you could call it, it. it looks a bit messy and uneven and splotchy, so the black outlines, it adds a little bit of cohesiveness to the whole piece. It tidies up the messiness, so to speak. I wasn't loving how it was turning out before, but the black outlines, it really brought this piece together, in my opinion. And then I'm adding a little bit of blue to the shine or the smoke or whatever it is, spiritual glow coming from the fox's eyes. And I think this is what makes this piece so interesting and it really adds an extra mysterious element to it. And all the colors, they look so pretty together, so colorful and vibrant. It is such a simple illustration, but I had so much fun with it, playing around with art supplies and the different techniques. I was a little hesitant in the beginning, to be honest, if I liked the texture of the crayons or not and the thick and chalky consistency and feeling. But after working with them for a little while, I learned how to use them a little better at least. And I really loved this scrawler box, all from the prompts to the art supplies it was overall a well put together box, definitely my favorite in a while. 
Here I'm using the white gel pen to add a little more glow and sparks and then it's pretty much done. Let me know what you think of it. So I hope you enjoy this painting. It will be available as art prints and other things in my shop so feel free to check that out. Also check out Scrawlerbox if you would like to try out some delicious art supplies for yourself. I can highly recommend it. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I hope I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats. Bye!